Hey friend, welcome to the Get Rooted in Health podcast. I'm Gabby Flater, a faith-led wife, mom of three, certified nutrition consultant, personal trainer, and passionate about changing lives. I know how frustrating it can be to navigate the health and wellness world. You want to be motivated to prioritize your well-being and wish you were more educated when it comes to cultivating a healthy home. Maybe you're a mom who's completely burnt out and needs a fresh perspective on life, or you're searching for a place to feel seen, heard, and encouraged in a godly manner. No matter if you're doing the dishes, getting your sweat on, or drinking reheated coffee while watching the kids play, there is always an opportunity for growth. If you are ready to finally take action about these desires and are ready to learn, grow, and transform your mind, then you are in the right place. It's time to establish deeper roots so you can enjoy a more fruitful and fulfilling harvest. Let's dig in. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Get Rooted in Health podcast. My name is Gabby. Thank you for tuning in this week. We are going to jump right into today's topic, chatting about kids outside and less screen time and honestly, just that in general for not even just kids, but for adults in general because I feel like I'm on my screen more than I want to be and while it can be a really positive tool uh, it can also be a distraction and just not a healthy thing Uh, and so I really wanted to touch on children kids um, because they are at such defining ages in those little years those first five years of growing up and just what we choose to um let them let them do and how we engage with them and how we get them up and moving and how they learn um is just so important and while technology is such an awesome thing i think it's become um overutilized and um just just too much and i'm sure i'm sure most of you would agree uh and especially when so much of the schools have started to implement, implement more of that, um, then that also just tacks on more outside of just doing it for fun. So then they're on watching screens more, using technology more, um, all of that kind of stuff. So I, I really feel that, uh, it, I just had a poll to share a little bit about, you know, what was on my heart about it and how we kind of, um, navigate it with our children I have four children under the age of six all the way down to a four-month-old today she's four months old that's crazy oh time flies uh but I I know and feel that you know as a society our kids spend more time indoors same with adults uh and less time outside and being outside and outdoors is so great for development. It improves your health and just being connected to nature. It stimulates your kids' imagination and creativity. I mean, I just think back to when I was a kid and all the playing I did outside and man, did my imagination run wild. And we want that for our kids, don't we? And when they are in such controlled environments or being given input they don't get the chance to just be and create and and have an imagination and I find that with myself I've struggled you know like as I want to create content and and give you guys resources and tools and just share my life in general and stuff excuse me I can get so bogged down and get in my head when I have so much input coming in from Facebook and Instagram and all the stories and other podcasts I listen to where I get overwhelmed and I just feel that my creativity and my imagination gets stunted because I over it's like all of a sudden I feel that I don't know what else to give because there's so much out there and I don't give room for my creative juices to just flow and to just do and and not worry about what else is going on online or being led to believe the lie that there's no room for what I have to offer because I know that that is a lie and uh, so many times I have really tried to focus on this mantra of I am a creator 
not a consumer. I create, I don't consume. Like that kind of a thing. Where I, I'm less spending less time consuming and spending more time creating. Because so often we're not left with just our thoughts in our mind. Like just a little side note, my husband and I, we were blessed with just a quick weekend without kids, uh, minus our, our littlest one, our baby. And it's funny cause like, it, so he's studying for an exam and so his brain is like crazy overwhelmed and just high input from all of the studying and he did he's taking practice exams and all the things so his brain is just tired and me mom here you know and I like to pursue all my fitness things I like to pursue all my business and gardening and all the things and I'm also on mom mode and so my brain can just get like super over stimulated and um yeah just high energy high input and when we didn't have our kids, we found ourselves like my husband just like sat on the porch after his morning of studying an exam. And he was like dozing off. Like he was just sitting in the sun and he was just like falling asleep. And then like later on, I was like, I don't know what I want to do. I'm just going to go lay down. And I just like took a nap. And it, and it was just so nice because we didn't feel like we wanted to engage in anything else and just like the ability to say no to that and just to be with your own thoughts or just be to rest was huge so like um my husband was like yeah like I just it just feels good to just be I don't often sit with just myself and my thoughts um and just be because he you know he wasn't on his phone he wasn't listening to anything he wasn't you know no kids to interact with and and I was busy with something and so he was just being and and it was just like yeah we don't do that often and sometimes it's scary to just sit and be so I know that was like a total tangent and side note but just allowing the imagination and creative side to come out of our kids from not having the input being put in and they can run around and be wild and I'll share about what I've gotten to witness seeing my kids do uh so when they don't when they are able to have that space to have the imagination and the creativity they are more challenged and forced to make up ideas they're forced to make up games stories you know storylines you know how many of us played house or store or were pretending to be animals or whatever um they are they are forced to have more critical thinking they actually have to come up with ideas. They have to figure out how they're going to do this thing outside that they want to. They're going to maybe learn how to ride their bike. They're going to learn to write and play with chalk and all the things, you know. And I stumbled across a couple different varying, you know, statistics of like how often kids spend time on screens. And honestly, I mean, it's more than we we would want. So what I kind of generally found is about ages 8 to 12 is they spend about five and a half hours on average a day on screens. Then that does not include schoolwork. So that's probably kids with like phones these days is it's literally a walking computer in your pocket. I did not have that and I'm so thankful that technology is not, it was not where it was today when I was in school texting was coming around there was myspace you know (laughs) which i really wasn't even allowed to have but then you know rolled right into facebook you know i had aol instant messenger those kinds of things but again um it 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 wasn't it definitely was not a consuming thing where i just whip out my phone and take pictures and videos and make a reel or share a story or you know all the things posting Um, It's definitely transformed and takes up a lot of time and mental time and does not allow for a lot of uh, just like alone time with your thoughts, with yourself, with just your people in your close corners, in your four walls of your home. So one of the things that we try to do especially in these summer spring summer months when it's you know not freezing outside uh and and we still try to get out in the cooler months here in the midwest but you know we got to do what we got to do 
And, you know, they always say sunlight is like the best way. Get outside, soak in some sunlight first thing when you wake up because that sets your circadian rhythm and allows you to actually go to bed better, like fall asleep better. So just think about, you know, how what you're giving your kids in terms of just the health in general by allowing them to start their day outside. And so... Um, and not every morning starts this way, but majority of them, it's like, hey, grab your breakfast, go sit on the porch and eat. I'll even go get my breakfast and sit on the porch and eat, or we'll do it at lunchtime. But like starting the day off or like, hey, mom's finishing up a workout. You guys can go play in the sandbox. You could go ride your bike. Sometimes the neighbor kids will wander on over and they're picking raspberries in the garden or yeah, playing, whatever it might be. We really try to make sure that we get outside first thing in the morning on these really, really nice summer days. Um, So eating breakfast, going on a walk, riding bikes in the garden, playing in the sandbox. Maybe they put their swimsuits on because it's already hot and they just are ready to go. Um, You know, anything to just get them out there. I've noticed that it just helps so much with mood. So if you have crabby children in the morning and they're just whining, you just got to be like, hey, look, grab your snack or your breakfast, whatever. We're going to sit outside. Um, you know, sit, sit out there and blow some bubbles for them. I don't know, whatever it might be. Uh, just watch how their mood changes. Like I, sometimes I just, I'm like, why are my kids driving me nuts? They're just so whiny in the morning. And, or like I've had it where I've come downstairs cause maybe I chose to sleep in or maybe I was on the treadmill and they didn't come find me and the TV was on. And when my kids have started the day with TV, it's like, no. And so we've had to have conversations with them. Like, if you want to watch it, you need to come and ask. But if we're not awake or and you want to watch it, like, or you want to be awake, you need to find something else to do. You need to play with Legos. You can color. You could read books. You know, find something else to do. Make yourself something to eat. But we're not going to start our day with TV because every time they've done that, it's just not been okay. And honestly, they're, they're the seasons where it's like, you know, when I have a baby in a colder month, so like my last one was born in March. It wasn't quite warm enough out. Um, and I just, we just needed to get by. We're surviving. It's tax season. My husband's working crazy hours. I'm tired. I'm healing. We're adjusting. And you know what? If the TV gets turned on, it gets turned on. Fine. But majority of the time, that is not how we are starting our mornings. As easy as it can be for us moms, like we want Sometimes it's just like the easy button, right? So we really have to strive and try hard to have the conversation with them and just say, look, TV is so fun. We love to let you watch TV, but you either need to come and ask me if you want to watch it in the morning or you need to, um, you know, you, you're not going to watch. You need to find something else to do. There's plenty of other things and there will be time for a show another time. So, um, Typically, you know, I just don't want them leaving and going outside unless I'm up and, you know, able to watch them outside or peek on them every now and again. So, um, yeah, that is that is one of the biggest benefits of just getting outside in the morning is it sets off their circadian rhythm, right, where they're just like waking up their body's internal time clock. It's time to wake up. They'll fall asleep better. It's good for their health. It's good for their mood and hopefully better attitudes for at least some of the day it's not going to fix the problem 100 percent. trust me but it definitely helps even me my mood so when we can just get out there we do uh you know and being in nature and outside and all of that is shown and proven to reduce stress lower depression for everyone and so like if okay I'll go back to when we were kidless this past weekend uh I we slept in I was I just I was not making plans on the on the Sunday and I just rolled out of bed and I made some coffee and I grabbed a bowl and I decided to go out in the garden because I knew we had a million raspberries this is our first year where they are like in the best abundance and really good and I don't want to waste them. And so I decided to go out there barefoot with my coffee and go pick raspberries by myself. And I was not stimulated by anything. I didn't have any kids to take care of other than the baby who I just had fed and she was sleeping. And I just could be. 
and I could just pick. I didn't put on any music. I didn't put on any podcasts. Sometimes I do that when I'm working in the garden, like multitask. Sometimes I think like, I'm such a good multitasker. And then it like nips me in the butt where I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't take any more input. Why am I crabby at my kids? Oh, because I've been overstimulating my brain too much, too much input, too much information between podcasts and watching Instagram stories and trying to do my own post and then my kids need something and then oh somebody called me and and then it's like oh my goodness what can I cut out and so I really enjoyed my morning of just seriously I stood there and picked raspberries for 40 minutes I I couldn't believe how fast the time flew but I loved every minute and I don't care that it took me that long to barely scratch the surface (laughs) uh but we yeah it, it was just so peaceful, so calming. And f- talk about lowering stress. Talk about enhancing your mood and just feeling good. So um, getting outside definitely helps with those types of things. And like I said, kids' moods are always much better when they start their day outside than with the TV or a, f- a screen or, yeah, either of those. Um, other things that, you know, we like to do outside of just like, you know, starting the exact start of the day outside, but like just being outside in general, um, I think kids, you know, having three to four hours of playtime, just like organic play is so helpful, especially in the summer months. You know, if your kids go to school, then they get the summer to just like organically play and, you know get creative. If you have older kids, you can make you you can make a day of something and get outside and go take them somewhere or get creative around the house with your little people. But you know, on the weekends, uh, we love hiking. We can go hiking or we'll just go on a walk around the neighborhood. Um, we also are a family that loves to disc golf. So if you've ever heard of disc golf or frisbee golf, that is a big thing in our family. We've been doing it since before we had kids, but then just really took off as we had children we just played it more and more and our kids literally could walk an entire 18 hole course or two boys so every time we've had a baby um someone gets booted out of the double stroller (laughs) uh and they are eventually able to walk and sometimes they find the find a spot to wiggle on the stroller but um if they're tired but majority of the time by the time they are two and a half to three um more like three they've been they can walk a whole course and we just, you know, we're not any, I mean, we're fairly fast and efficient now that we've been doing it for as long as Winston's been, you know, around. So like six years, six and a half years, um, with kids doing this. So we kind of know what we're doing, but you know, every kid's different. So sometimes you go slower, sometimes you got to carry a kid, sometimes, you know, whatever. Um, but they just know the drill. And that is a huge way where we could kill three hours, two hours of time and enjoy being outside, being active, and time together. Uh, and it's it's great. So we love disc golfing. So I encourage you to find something that you enjoy doing with your family, whether that's going to just different parks, different, different hiking parks, um, or just playgrounds, going to different splash pads, which are so fun these days. I didn't have those growing up. I think they're fantastic um the beach you can go find you know tennis if some or if you guys like to play basketball find a basketball court um yeah I mean whatever it might be you just you just find what your family loves to do together and make memories doing it um but other things you know you just play with chalk on the on the driveway come up with fun games bubbles sandbox go to the pool the park Um, all of those things and then just the organic play that happens where like I don't have I don't entertain my kids half the time outside where they're just like they're playing kitties like they just want to be cats or they play you know who knows what like mom and dad and you know house type stuff or they're finding sticks and boards and sometimes they get things they're not supposed to and we have to talk with them like no you can't be using the tools from the garage to do this like that is off limits but you know they find this and that and scraps of this and leaves and twigs and I don't know they've been into like building with boards we've had these old boards from their playground um we had to rebuild a certain part of their playset, and so we had some extra boards that were lying around and they've been like 
propping them against trees and making forts or making like a little house or like a little area for like our cat that's outside. Uh, and, and then I'll see them like running around on all fours, like hopping around like they're cats. And it's just, it's hilarious. It's so funny. Um, but they're riding scooters around in circles. They're trying out new tricks. I love getting to just watch them, you know, without them knowing that I'm watching them and just like see how their brains work and listen to their little conversations and be like, oh my gosh, I did not know you knew how to do that. Like, look at how strong you are. If they're like figured out the monkey bars or they figured out how to swing or all of a sudden now our four-year-old is riding his pedal bike with no training wheels. Um, we've, we've only done balance bikes to then a regular bike. We've not done training wheels on bikes and it's worked for our, for our boys. So I can't wait to see um, how that works for um, our girls as they transition into that as they get older. But just watching them, again, have to have the critical thinking. They have to get resourceful. They have to try again. They have to figure it out. And no one's telling them. And and yes, there are times, many times when we're playing out there. Or it's so sweet when one of them grabs a bucket of balls and a bat. And one's pitching to the other and they're just playing baseball. Um, so, so many things. You just have to keep, come. you know, sometimes they need need help, come up with ideas, have so many things that they can play with, just balls, bats. I mean, we have golf clubs. We have a Frisbee golf basket. We have little holes in the ground for golf balls to hit into. Like my husband has done really well with that. And part of it like is a shout out to my husband because I didn't grow up homeschooled. So I didn't get all this extra play time so much, like all the time, um, like free organic play besides like summer, I should say. And even that I, you know, that's just a short time of the year, but, um, like he was homeschooled. And so just how his brain is wired to look at things and, and figure out how to get resourceful or make a game out of something. He is so good at that where I'm like, how did you come up with this game? So like, where they're like tossing, you know, when we're inside a lot of the times too, like when it's cold out and he's come up with such good ideas and I'm like, wow, you're like amazing. I didn't even think of that. I am no fun. <laughs> Leave it to dad. But um, no, I just feel that he was given that. And so that's how he is wired. And, and so I just love that and that he can enhance our kids' lives in their imagination. And then all of a sudden I've watched my oldest ju- be just like his dad. Where he, I'm like, wow, buddy, you came up with that all by yourself. And he did like all these things um, for play or a project or crafting he's really into crafting it's super funny he, we, we watch a show gabby's dollhouse or whatever it's super funny because you know my name is gabby and they like to watch the show but they do tons of different little crafts and so he's always like mom can i i want to do a craft i want to do crafting i'm like great and so then he'll even come up with his own things and half the time it's just a bunch of tape and chopped up pieces of paper and cardboard all over the place which drives me nuts but i'm like this is the best kind of stuff that there can be and I'd rather have that so you know we just clean it up after it's not like it was a a a messy mess that couldn't be picked up it just needs to be thrown away when it's done all the pieces on the ground so just you know trying to realize what's worth getting a fuss about and what's not um so yeah just getting to watch their brains be creative Um, all the critical thinking they have to do coming up with ideas and games and also just social aspect of just like they have to figure out how to get along and work together and when the neighbor boys just come over to play because our yards are connected sometimes they wander over and they're just playing and so they have to figure out how to work with other people and engage with them and give them ideas and work together and share um which you know I have to help with sometimes when there's moments but yeah, it's super sweet. And then getting to watch the older brothers help their sister um, and just be kind with her and helpful. And she's watched and learned so much from them. So it's really fun. So just being outside allows for so much organic things to happen. And and it's super neat. And, and I just, I love it. And it wears them out. So hopefully, you know, it just makes them more tired. <laughs> but yes, in the winter, it's harder. So we get out on lots of walks when we can. Um you know, the boys are not old enough. They can help with shoveling if there's snow. But like the cooler weather is it's just more like riding bikes if there's not snow on the ground. Um, going on walks 
you know, they can play out in the yard when there's not like all the snow. But when it's snowy, then you just come in and you got to figure out and get creative. We've got a trampoline in our house, um, tons of Legos, coloring, games. We play a lot of board games or cards with our kids. We've we've taught them a lot. Um, just getting, coming up with creative games or challenges. If Winston's into crafts, maybe we figure something out, out with that. I'm not a crafty mom. I don't do crafts. I'm just, it's just not me unless I am super inspired. Um, yeah, that is not my wheelhouse. So yeah, (laughs) um, but we'll be in the kitchen. We'll bake things. That's my wheelhouse. That's where I can, you know, engage my kids and, um, you know, let's make cookies today or let's learn how to do this, or you can help with this. And, um, so yeah, there's, there's so many things outside of screen time and, um, all of that to do and spend time with your kids. So I just wanted to encourage you guys. And, and again, like as I started the, the podcast off, like sharing just me and myself and my struggles with being in front of, it's not, I don't really struggle with the TV. Like I don't, I don't need TV and and shows and Netflix. Like we do watch a show at night to wind down, which we probably could do without, but I'm not like, I need the TV on all the time. You know, I'm not like, it's just more my phone where the phone is everything. It's, it's all of the social medias. It's all of the texting it's all of the emails it's all of the banking it's all of the amazoning like all everything you know shop online shopping and so just feels like I'm constantly trying to keep up with something or what was I supposed to order oh yeah I need to add this to my grocery list oh yeah I have to text my mom back oh okay and then it's like oh I have downtime what do I what am I what do I do I reach for my phone and then all of a sudden I'm like scrolling on Instagram and then I'm like oh I have this new idea and it's like I wouldn't have had these ideas or this thought or this feeling of feeling less than if I didn't have social media so that's like a whole nother topic um in and of itself but um there was something else I was gonna say but uh yeah just the the whole concept of the digital world is it's so awesome it's really great I do love it but it also has um it's moments where it's not it's it's a weakness it's definitely a weakness in our world and we don't need to rely on it. It's not going to solve the problem. It's not going to fix us. We don't need more. We just need less and we need to be present in what we have right here around us. And so if we can teach that to our kids and instill that, it's naturally going to happen for us too as parents. Um, but we want it even more for our kids because gosh, I don't even, I don't even know what it's going to be like when I have to enter into that world for my children when they get to those ages of asking for a phone or asking to go on or asking to have Facebook oh I know what I was gonna say excuse me I'm a little stuffy here um threads the new like social media platform I don't even know I'm not downloading it I'm not planning on it at least I I don't really know why I would need to I never got on the TikTok thing I never got onto Twitter and I know threads is kind of like the Twitter the new Twitter but owned by Facebook and Instagram the meta thing I don't know all this stuff kind of freaks me out but like it's gonna take over the world um and so if you're struggling with that like oh I gotta keep up with another thing no you don't you don't you don't have to keep up with another thing. I'm like, most people are like cross posting. So then everything they post there, they're posting on Instagram. I like, I, I'm just confused. Um, but like I said, I've chosen to stick to two platforms and that's Facebook and Instagram for me. I, I can't do Twitter and I can't do threads and, and whatever else is out there. TikTok. I don't, I don't have time for it all. I don't have room for it all. I don't find it worth my time or value there's no value for me I don't honestly like yeah I want more people to follow me to find my content but I'm just like I don't really even care about who cares about followers and a following and all that I just I mean I just want people to follow me for this like to get the content that I'm sharing and just to live life together and create a community and honestly that's what I love that I've done um I really try to hold loosely to the whole like numbers thing online and not get caught up in the likes and the comments and the following and just do what I feel I'm led to do um, because that's not where my worth is. But I do know that I've been called to speak 
and to be a leader and shine my light and show people how I've lived my life and how I've gotten through things, the ups, the downs, the hard times, the joyous times. And, and that's where I've been able to do that with social media because it's built such a great community where I know I can inspire and encourage people. And now I've, I've had people reach out to me so much, be like, where they like thought of me. I had someone reach out to me because she knew that I had shared something about a red light, like a light bulb. Um, you know, I talk about like blue blocking at nighttime and, and red light therapy and red lights and all the things and winding down at night, you should have more like red light, low light type things for your body to calm down. And I don't even know the last time I talked about it, but this lady messaged me out of the blue and she was like, Hey, I feel like I remember you talking about this red light bulb that you had. Where did you get that? And I'm like, Oh my gosh, I don't even know when I, that was like, I don't even know a long time ago, but the fact that somebody watched it, associated it with me and remembered, it's like, I love that. I I love when people will come to me with those kinds of things, or they know to reach out to me for a sourdough question or for when they're struggling reading labels on food. Like I've had it all. And I love when people need me for those kinds of things because I've spilt that rapport through the online community. And so that's where I try to really be the creator in that so that people can consume content that's helpful. Um, but also if you're feeling overwhelmed, unfollow the people that aren't serving you, that aren't helping, that are just filling space, that are just, yeah. And, and sometimes that even is the good stuff. And if you have to take a break from it all, take a break from it all. I am not going to tell you that it would not be good to do. It's, it would be good for all of us to do. Sometimes I wonder what living life without the phone <laughs> Like, seriously, I'm like, could I leave my phone for a weekend? You know, or at least just only have it for like making a phone call. <laughs> like, can I just have a flip phone and leave my uh, my, my other phone at home? Um, just what that life would feel like. Like, do you ever think about that? Maybe we should save that for another topic. But anyway, I hope that this gave you some ideas as a parent with kids and even just for yourself, just to encourage you maybe before you have kids. Um, but also just to yourself, like get yourself outside. You know, adults need it too. Our kids need it even more. They need so much playtime. They need the organic play. Um, especially if you're in the homeschooling realm too, or are considering it, there's going to be so much of that because guess what? They're not going to be sitting in a schoolroom for eight hours a day. They're not going to be confined by a building. They're going to have everything. And I grew up within the four walls of a school building. And I have been learning how to break that mindset, how to learn differently. I've had to unlearn things and learn new things. Um, And it's been, and it still is, um, a journey. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed the episode today. If you have not left a comment on any of my posts, if you don't follow the Get Rid and Help podcast on Instagram, go find it there. If you've not left me a rating or review, I would so appreciate that. That really helps bump this podcast up to the top. I could use a few more of them if you are willing. It's a free way that you can love and support the show. As always, you can email me at gabby.flater at getrootedinhealth.com. With any topic ideas, you can message me anywhere. You have me on, on Facebook or Instagram or if you have my number. Um, Just feel free to hit me up with any topics that you want to hear from or any wins that you had or success stories or whatever. I love hearing where you guys are tuning in from, what you're soaking up, what you're you're loving. Um, It means so much to me that you're here. All right, we'll catch you on the next episode.